In this video, we're going to talk about a skill that is called curve sketching. Now, I know that, and you know that, you can just plug the equations into TI-89 and get a curve and see what it looks like and trace it. Or you can use a program like Desmos and do the same thing. Super easy, but this is what we used to do when we wanted to sketch a curve and figure out what it's shaped like. Now, the reason why we're still doing this, even though you have tools to do it, is because the logic behind what's going on with this skill is helpful for our thinking. So we're using this, uh, this activity as a way, an entrance into understanding. We're still going to do this uh, pretending as if we couldn't just throw it into our calculators and get the curve, all right? So let's say that we had a function, a nice simple function. Um, <clears throat> f of x is x squared minus x minus two, right? Simple quadratic. We know what that's generally shaped like. It's a parabola. It's a parabola that opens upwards because it has a positive first leading term uh, in front of the x squared term. Fair enough. But if I wanted to sketch this, um, what I would want to know are what are the important points on that curve? Well, some important points that we could talk about are intercepts, uh, turning points, also called extrema, and then one other type of point that doesn't exist in this graph but we'll talk about in a couple of minutes called the point of inflection. If I know where all the intercepts, extrema, and points of inflection are, then I can sketch a curve and figure out what its shape looks like. And so that's what this skill is about. So let's just talk first. So let's say I have to do this curve sketching activity and the problem says find all the important points, meaning all the intercepts, the extrema, and the points of inflection. I'm gonna go through a work standard for what that has to look like as we're doing some notes. So here we go. Uh, y intercept, nice and easy here. The Y intercept can be found just by doing F of zero. And we know F of zero is just negative two. Fair enough. Um, and then uh, if I want to do the x-intercepts, I know that I'm just going to say f of x is equal to zero. Now this particular function, x squared minus x minus two, is pretty straightforward here. Um, it factors, uh, obviously it factors because I've chosen it to factor, right? Um, so we have a nice simple function. So x is equal to negative one or two. And so our x-intercepts then, if our, well, the, rather our y-intercept is the point uh, zero comma negative two. Our x-intercepts therefore are the points um, negative one comma zero and two comma zero. All right, cool. Now, let's say that uh, this didn't factor neatly. We're not gonna use quadratic equation. We're gonna use that tool of that TID9. You should know how to plug the function in the TID9 and use the solve for the, uh, the zeros, finding the zeros of a function very simply with your TID9. If you don't, you need to do a little work to figure that out. Um, find someone in the class who knows how to do it. Remember, I know I'm not the expert on it. I use, I use other things to do those, uh, so feel free. Uh, I can link you up with other people in the class who are good at it if you are not. So here we go. I'm going to plot those points now. So 0 comma negative 2. So um, that's this point here. And then uh, let's plot our point there. And then we'll plot um, uh, 2 comma 0. Right? And this is a sketch. It's not perfect. We're going to keep coming back to this. But I've got three of the points so far. So next up, what we want to do is find our turning points. Now, remember, a turning point on a graph, or an extrema on a graph, is going to be a place where the value of the function goes from decreasing to increasing, or the value of the function goes from increasing to decreasing, right? It turns around. No matter what, at that point, the slope of the tangent line at that point is going to equal zero. So therefore, that's why we're going to do what's called a first derivative test in order to find our turning points. And so here we go, f prime of x. And so we're gonna do our derivatives and so our work standard still while we're doing the calculus unit is to do the sum rule. I know we can do this in our heads at this point, it's a super easy one, but it doesn't take exactly that much time just to do this either. And so that's f prime of x. Now, let's talk a little bit about what it means for f prime of x to be greater than zero less than zero and equal to zero. 
kind of already talked about this last one, but I do want to talk about all of these because the logic of this is really important. Remember, the derivative is an operation that yields a function that tells you the slope of the function at every point in the domain of the original function. So wherever the derivative function is positive, that means the slope of f of x is positive in that region or at that point, right? Whether it's in an interval or at a point, that's true. Uh, here, the slope of f prime of x is negative, and here the slope of f prime of x is equal to zero. It's flat, all right, or at least the tangent line is flat at that point or in that interval, depending on what we're talking about, what value or values of x we're talking about. Now, in terms of this is the slope of f of x, let's talk about what's happening to the value of f of x. In a region where f of x is positive, rather the slope of f of x is positive, the value of f of x is increasing. Okay? That's what a positive slope means, is that the function is trending towards uh, infinity in that range. Here, this, the value of the function, I'm oh, sorry, this should be the slope of f of x, not f prime of x. Right, same thing here, sorry. The value of f of x is decreasing. But what does that mean if at, in a place where f prime of x is equal to zero? Well, here's the thing. If I'm talking about it at a point, I really don't know what's happening at that point, whether uh, the value is increasing or decreasing. If in a region, though, f prime of x is equal to zero in, in an interval, that means the value of the function is not changing. So uh, this has a different meaning at a point. I don't know, but in a region, if f prime of x is equal to zero, therefore f of x is uh, not changing in value. And so that's really helpful for us then. But at a point, if f prime of x is equal to zero, and sort of before that point and after that point, it's not equal to zero, we're gonna be able to talk about the turning points at that point. So here we go. Let's look at this uh, particular function here. Right? This is not the work we'd be showing for this problem, I'm just talking about the logic of it. Let's talk about where is f prime of x equal to zero? Because if I know where f prime of x is equal to zero, I know where it's positive, I know where it's negative, right? Because I can kind of figure that out. And so here that's two x minus one is equal to zero. So it's equal to zero at exactly x equals one half. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do something called a number line analysis. Now I'm just gonna do here uh, part of the number line analysis. We're gonna kind of build our number line analysis as we go along. And so here are our values of x. The only value of x I really care about here right now is this 1 half. And what I'm gonna do is above this, I'm gonna talk about f prime of x. So in the interval where x is less than 1 half, what's true about f prime of x? Well, let's look at this expression to figure it out, right? Uh, what's a convenient value less than one half? Well, one easy way we can do is just uh, talk about going to negative infinity, but there's actually an easy value here of uh, zero. So if we look here, that the value of the derivative below one half is negative. And the value of the derivative above uh, one half, let's say if I choose one here or infinity, is positive. That means at this point here, one half, the slope is going from negative to positive. So what does that mean, that the slope is going from negative to positive? Well, let's talk about that. The slope is negative, so a negative slope might look like this, right? Or actually, that's a positive slope. A negative slope looks like this, right? Um, and the slope is changing, right? Because it's a function. Um, so the slope is approaching zero as negative, and then it is positive after that point and approaching infinity. And there you have it. That's what that shape looks like 
in a region where to the left of the point, the value of the slope is negative, and to the right of the point, the value of the slope is positive. All right? So where f prime of x is equal to 0 and f of prime of x goes from negative to positive, what's happening in that region of the graph? Well, apparently what you have here is at the place or we're at the x where f prime of x is equal to 0, what I have there is a relative minimum. Okay? Well, another way to think about that is by looking back here at these notes. We're talking about a region where the slope is negative and the slope is, is uh, 0, then positive. So the value of f of x is decreasing and then the value is increasing. Oh, a point where it decreases to a value and then increases, we're talking about a relative minimum. Cool, so where does a rel min occur? A rel min occurs when f prime of x equals zero and f prime of x goes negative to positive. Now we're gonna have another way of talking about that in a second. So what must be true about a relative maximum? A rel max is a point where f prime of x Sorry, f prime of x is equal to 0, and f prime of x goes positive to negative. And that should make sense here as well, right? Because if I'm going from positive to negative, I'm going from the value of the function is increasing, and then the value of the function is decreasing. Perfect. Increasing and then decreasing, okay? So rel min, and then rel max. Looks like that. So this number line analysis, this first derivative test number line analysis is helpful because I can see very clearly the negative to positive going from the left to the right. And therefore I know that this is a rel min because it fits the definition. So what we do here when we do these uh, analyses is we do the first derivative test and we create our number line. And then we will state things like, oh, rel min or rel max because these conditions. Now, we're going to have another way of saying something about when you have a rel min or rel max because there are two sufficient proofs. The first sufficient proof is this statement in conjunction with the number line analysis, um, and then we'll talk about what the other is. But now we found that we have a rel min at x equals 1 half. Let's find that point. So that means that f of 1 half is equal to... Um, we'll plug that back into the original function to find out. Here I'll show the plugin. You can just throw this into your calculator and do that computation. Uh, and we get here, um, what is this? One quarter minus a half minus two. Uh, so that looks like negative 2.25. Cool. So at the point one half, let's put this all in decimal, 0. 0.5 comma negative 2.25, I have a rel min. So I'm going to come back to my little graph here and go, okay, well, this is happening at x equals half, right? And then y would equal negative 2.25. So I'm going to put that here. And I'm going to put that point here as a triangle. So I'm doing dots for my intercepts. I'm doing a triangle here for my uh, minimum. And so from there, I can kind of sketch out the function, but I want to do one other thing uh, just to, to sort of emphasize this. So next, that's the first derivative test. The first derivative test is used to find points of extrema, relative mins and relative maxes. Let's now look at what's called the second derivative test. Oh, man, this pen is out of many of the types of ink. Second derivative test. Now, what is the second derivative? Well, very simply, the derivative tells you the slope of the original function, right? But it yields, that operation yields a function. So all we're doing is taking the derivative of the derivative function. So let's talk notation for a second. So y is equal to f of x, right? That's our notation. So if I'm taking the derivative of that, dy dx, right? Or as we said, it's d dx of y is another way of talking about that. And we know that that's equal to f prime
prime of x. That's the way we set it. Now, if I want to take the derivative again of that, so that is taking d dx of this, right? That would look like d dx of d dx of y. Kind of awkward in terms of that notation, which is why we write it as d squared y dx squared, right? It's the derivative of the derivative of y. And we get f double prime of x as a notation. So we're just taking the derivative function, right? Because another way to write this is d dx of f prime of x. It's all the same notation, just expressed different ways. Now, one thing before we get too far. When I'm talking about the derivative, let's say dy dx, remember, this is a ratio. Because dx is a little change in x, an infinitesimal change in x, which yields an infinitesimal change in y. That is a ratio. But if you look here, d squared y dx squared, that's not a ratio. It is not separable in the same way we did it. We couldn't do chain rule with this because this breaks down to d dx of dy dx, right? It is an operator acting on our ratio. So it's not like there's a d squared y and a dx squared that has a separate meaning in the same way that these are differentials. So that's important conceptually for us to wrap our heads around. Now, what does this all mean? Well, the second derivative is the first derivative of the first derivative. Derivative. Now I know that's a weird sentence, but let that sink in for a second. Stop the video for a second. Think if you can think of an implication of what that means. All right, hopefully you stopped it, you thought for a second, and now you're back. We know that the first derivative function is the slope of the original function, right? Which means that the second derivative is the slope of the first derivative function. But that doesn't really help us explain what's going on with the original function. But if you think of this instead, not in terms of slope for a moment, but change, the first derivative, f prime of x, this describes how the original function is changing in a region, right? Because that's what slope is. That means f double prime of x, because it is the first derivative of the first derivative, it describes how the slope of the original function is changing, okay? Since derivatives are about change, the second derivative is the change in the change of the original function. But it's easier to say it describes how the slope of the original function is changing. Or you can say it describes how the change in the original function is changing. So let's see what that means. All right. Let's talk about what it means for the second derivative then to be, pos uh, to be positive, the second derivative to be negative, and the second derivative to be zero. So what this says is that the slope of the function f of x is increasing. That's a very fraught sentence, and we'll get back to it in a second. Here, this means the slope of the original function, or I'll just say the function, f of x is decreasing. And here, the slope 
of the original function is not changing. Okay? Everyone good? All right, so here we go. The slope is increasing. Increasing is a fraught word. Remember, increasing just means going from negative infinity towards infinity. Decreasing just means going from infinity to negative infinity. So, let's talk about this. And we'll use the, the function that we're dealing with as our example. If I do f double prime of x of the function that we're dealing with, that's taking the first derivative of the first derivative. And we know that the first derivative function is 2x minus 1 for this. So that gives us ddx of 2 plus ddx, or 2x, of negative 1, which gives us that the second derivative is equal to a constant. Okay? Now, that constant is positive. So what that tells me is the slope of the original function is increasing, but the way that it's increasing is it's increasing in a constant manner. Okay? So the slope of the original function is increasing in a constant manner. It's a very regulated type of change. So what does that mean going back to our original function? Well, here we go. Our original function is x squared minus x uh, minus 2. And we know this thing has a minimum. We know that it is going from uh, a slope that is always increasing as, uh, as we go from negative infinity to infinity here, right? And so here, what that means is something very interesting because if we notice in this region, and we'll go back to the first derivative test, in the region where the slope is negative, that means the slope is increasing, meaning the slope is going from negative infinity to zero. So here's the weird thing. The slope is increasing in a mathematical sense, but because it's going from large negative values to small negative values to zero, what does that look like? Well, back here, large negative values of the slope to small negative values towards zero. And then it keeps increasing from zero to small positive values to large positive values. There it is. Right? If I just sketch in a couple of these kind of tangent lines here, not perfect, but just so you can get a sense, large negative, smaller negative, zero. But here's the thing. Notice here, the slope is increasing, but that messes with people's minds because the slope is getting flatter here, and then the slope is getting steeper. People mess up all the time the distinction between slope getting flatter and slope getting steeper. So when does the slope get flatter and when does the slope get steeper? Because this helps us out. Notice here that our slope of our function is increasing entirely. Notice the slope gets flatter in the region where the second derivative is positive, but the first derivative in this region is negative. So coming back then, slopes get flatter when f double prime of x is positive and f prime of x was negative. That's, I'm not saying that's the only case, folks, but that's true in this example. And we have our slopes getting steeper when f double prime of x is positive and f prime of x is positive as well. So let's see if we can kind of figure out what's going on here. So if the slope is positive 
and the change in the slope is positive, that means that the slope is going to become more positive, i.e. a steeper value. Here, the slope is negative, say like negative 8 at a point. But the change in the slope is positive, so negative 8 as a slope is going to become negative 7, then negative 6, then negative 5. That's getting flatter. So hopefully what you figured out is slopes get flatter when the second derivative has the opposite sign of the first derivative. And slopes get steeper when the second derivative has the same sign as the first derivative. Because if the change in the change is going in the same direction as the original change, then that change is going to get larger, right? So let's talk about something else now. If I just said the slope of the original function is increasing, could you tell me what's happening to the value of the function? And the answer is no, you can't, right? Because there are two things that could be true here. If the, um, we had a region where the original function was decreasing in value and then increasing in value with the same second derivative sign. So just knowing the second derivative sign doesn't tell me what's happening to the change in the value of the function. But now with these, knowing both the first and second derivative of the, uh, the, 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 the function, we can figure it out. So the next thing that I want to talk about is each of these situations. I have a, um, uh, let's see, I have a slope that is negative and it is getting flatter, right? Because the second derivative is positive. So that's this, right? And then here we have, or sorry, here we have the uh, second derivative is still positive, but the slopes are getting steeper, or the, excuse me, the slopes are getting more positive. And we said that that looks like this. Here, I have a positive slope that is uh, decreasing right? Because the change in the first derivative is negative. And so here we go. I know that this is going to become, uh, go towards zero. And then here, same second derivative, it's still negative, uh, but now the slopes are going to become negative and you get this. So here's the next thing or the graphical interpretation of the second derivative. Notice this shape, um, cup up and cup down, smiley face and frowny face. You might have heard this, but what we're going to talk about is the concept of concavity. Concavity is told to you by the sign of the second derivative. If f prime, double prime of x is positive, what I have here is a graph that is concave up, we say, or a positive concavity. And if f double prime of x is negative, then I have a, its concave down or negative concavity, right? So that's important. So what does it mean then for the uh, f double prime of x to equal zero? Well, that's going to be a zero concavity or a flat line at that location, right? Or in that region. So concavity, hugely important here. So how can we put this all together? Well, you'll notice uh, the following here. What's happening at this location here or this location here? Notice here, what we have is that f prime of x would equal zero at that location, while f double prime of x is going to be positive. Here, f prime of x is equal to zero, but f double prime of x is uh, less than zero, negative. Notice here, these become conditions for a rel min or a rel max. And so we can talk about another way of proving something as a pointer is a min or a max by doing what's called a second derivative test. 
So what we can do here is on our number line analysis, here you go, um, I've got one half, that's the only important number. We know that the first derivative here is uh, negative below that point and positive below that point. And then we go on top here, we do a second derivative, and we know for the whole region there uh, that it is positive. And so where f prime of x is equal to zero and the second derivative is, is uh, positive, I know that that's a rel max and that's another way of doing this. And that would have been a nice way also of once I had my points, sketching it in, oh, I know the concavity here is two, it's positive, so I need to just draw a cup up through the entire region. And so there you go, uh, that is the full analysis. So I wanna do one more sample problem, kind of just to synthesize it together and do a little less theory throughout it, just so you can see what the whole thing looks like. So here we go. Um, let's pick the function, ooh, I don't know, uh, x cubed, or f, uh, f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 5, okay? And what we're going to do here is we're going to, whoops, sorry, uh, find all the things that we talked about before so that we could solve this problem. So what do we have to find? We have to find here all of our intercepts. We have to find uh, all of our turning points. And we have to find all of our, uh, what are going to be called points of inflection. We'll come back to what that is in just a moment because we didn't talk about it in the last graph because the last graph doesn't have that. So here we go, y-intercept. Okay, we know that that's found by doing f of x, uh, f of zero. And so that gives us five. So we've got the point zero comma five. Um, X intercepts. That's when f of x is equal to zero. And so uh, you're gonna wanna throw this in your calculator, find the roots of this function. I did the same thing. You can shut the video off for a second, take a second to do that. And when you come back, you'll see it. All right, so hopefully what you found out is that there's only one root of this uh, function, and it's at x equals negative 0 0.831 and some other decimal places, but we'll just restrain it to that. And so therefore, my x-intercept position is going to be negative 0 0.831 comma 0. And what I'm going to do is just on the bottom of this page, I'm going to uh, sketch that in. So I've got 1, uh, 2, 3, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, just... There we go, and I go one, two, uh, three, four, five, because I know um, that my function is gonna cross there and about there. Okay, cool. And we'll be plotting these points as we go along. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do is my first derivative, so I can find my turning points. So f, f prime of x is equal to uh, ddx of x cubed plus ddx of negative 4x squared plus ddx of 2x plus ddx of 5. So what do I have there? 3x squared uh, minus 8x plus 2. All right, so that's boom. And so now what I want to do here is to find my turning points, remember all I'm going to do is take f prime of x and equal that to 0. So you do that. Shut the, the video off for a half second and find those two uh, values, because it should be two or none, depending on what this looks like. All right, hopefully uh, what you found is that x is equal to uh, 0 0.279 uh, and uh, 2.387, okay? And uh, Great, so uh, what we also wanna know is, because we wanna plot those points, we wanna know what the values of those points are as well. So uh, what you wanna do is just evaluate that. So f prime, or excuse me, we wanna go back to the original function. So f of 2.79 equals something, and f of uh, 2.387 is equal to something. So throw that into the calculator, uh, shut off the computer, or the computer, the video for a second, and then you can see that.
All right, so here we go. Hopefully what you got is for this one, 5.268 or something like that. And this is 0 0.583. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go back to the graph because at 2.79, so somewhere around here, I'm up here at five point something or other, and I'm gonna put uh, a box there to represent that. And at two and a little bit there, it's about here. Now I think you can kind of guess that that's probably gonna be a maximum, that's a minimum based on the other points, but let's not guess, let's know. And the way we're gonna do that is, I could do the first derivative number line analysis, but I'm gonna do uh, using the second derivative test of the first derivative to do this which means that what I wanna do now is I wanna find the second derivative and then we'll do our number line analyses. So f double prime of x. So that's gonna be d dx of three x squared plus d dx of negative eight x plus d dx of two. And so that's six x minus eight. All right, so here's the thing. This is a weird one because that means that the concavity itself as a function, because the second derivative is not just a number. Before we had the concavity, it was two. It was a positive concavity. It was cup up the entire place. Um, so here, there is gonna be a place where the concavity switches from positive to negative or negative to positive, and there's gonna be a place where the concavity is equal to zero. So that's what I wanna find. I wanna find the place where the concavity is equal to zero, right? So what is that? That's 6x minus 8 equals 0. So that's x is equal to, move that over, uh, 1 and a third, right? 1.3 repeating. All right. And so what value of x does that occur at? Well, actually, I, uh, you can plug that into your calculator. 1.3 repeating is equal to, and I should have done this earlier, and I did not. So I'm just going to put the plug in there and throw it into my calculator. So give me half a second to do that. Uh, you can shut the video off and then come back to it in a second uh, as I stall for time. Okay. As I stall for time because my calculator has stopped working, let's go at my trusty Casio instead. Here we go. So 1.333. That's a third minus four times third plus divided by three plus five. Okay, and I'm getting that this is at 2.926. Um, so meaning my uh, point that I care about here is at 1.3 repeating, 2.926. Now, what is this point called? Well, this point is a point where the concavity is changing, either from going uh, downwards concave to upwards concave, or from upwards concave to downwards concave. That's the point we're talking about there, because uh, negative concavity to positive concavity there has to be a place where there's a zero concavity, and so on and so forth. This point is called a point of inflection. And a point of inflection can only occur on a function of order three or higher. So let's plot that in because it's our last critical point. So it's at 1.3 repeating, so about here. Uh, and then two, so approximately here. So let's characterize these points now by doing our, our uh, derivative test. So here we go. I'm gonna put my number line down and let's put all of our important points. I've got the 0 0.279 and I've got the uh, 2.387. Those are the values of x that matter when we're talking about the first derivative. So looking back at the first derivative function there, yes, um, I can test this at zero, right? So at zero, f prime of x is gonna have a positive value, so there's positive. And if I take this as I go to um, uh, positive infinity, limit as this approaches positive infinity, this clearly goes to positive as well. Let me pick a value between there, one, three, minus eight, two, this is negative. So that tells me something about what's going on there. 
Now, I can simultaneously do what's called a second derivative number line analysis here. And the point that I care about is that 1.3 repeating point. So what I'm gonna do here is put a little dashed line up here. And if we look at the function for the second derivative, it's the six x minus eight. Below this, I get a negative, right? If I plug in zero for that, uh, and then this as I approach infinity is positive. So you will note the place where the first derivative is zero, but negative concavity, that's gotta be a, a rel max, right? Negative concavity, but the slope is zero, right? So at this point, I would say uh, because f prime of x is equal to zero and f double prime of x is negative, I have a rel max at x equals two, uh, 0.279. And then here, because f prime of x is equal to zero and f double prime of x is apparently positive, I have a rel min at x equals 2.387. And that's the other way that you can write your proof for things being rel maxes and rel mins. So let's finish it off now and come back to this because these number lines really help for what we're doing. Because I know here's an intercept, here's an intercept, uh, no other intercept. I know that's the point of concavity change. So I know in this region below this, the concavity is downwards, meaning I'm gonna draw something that's concave down, that's my rel max, boom. And now it goes to concave up, so concave up, rel min, and boom, and there you have your function. I don't have to, uh, I know it seems like a lot of work, but the logic of concavity, the logic of slope, the logic of how concavity informs how slope changes, and slope informs how value changes, that's the important skill we wanna come about with and talking about our number line analyses. So it's a lot, but there you go. I'm gonna ask you to do some curve sketch yourself. And those curve sketch standards are exactly what I just did in this problem with showing um, uh, our intercepts, with showing our uh, first derivative test, second derivative test, and some explicit proof of how you know things are rel mins and rel max, finding your points of inflection, plotting all of it. Oh, and by the way, I probably should have plotted my point of inflection with like a triangle or something just to make it a little bit different. So my points are my intercepts, my boxes are my rel mins and rel maxes, and my triangles are points of inflection or something along those lines. So there you go.